Hello, so in this last lecture on verification concepts, we'll go through a case study uh, to reinforce some of the concepts that we learned in the several lectures. So the objective of this case study is to pick a sample design and walk through some of the verification planning and execution steps. And we'll try to uh, learn how some of the concepts that we learned are applied in this uh, whole process. So uh, let's start. So the step one is in any verification is to first understand the given design spec. So in this case, let's take a simple to cross through Ethernet switch. So this is a simple uh, switch uh, switch that can take like uh, packets on two input ports. Uh, so there are two input ports here coming to the design and the test, which is the Ethernet switch. And these packets can be routed on two output ports based on some attributes in the packet. So its design specification might look like this. So in this case, we have like two input and output ports. All the ports operates on the same clock. The packets can be of random sizes. The packet can come back to back or it can come with idle cycles in between. Uh, the specification will also capture details on how the packet might look like. So the packet format say for this design specification has something like this. There is a source address, there is a destination address, there is a random data field, and they have a CRC computed across the whole packet. So the specification will tell you exactly there's like four bytes of destination address, four bytes of source address, four bytes of CRC, and they will also tell you what is the data byte. So in this case, uh, picking up with an example of Ethernet, so it's a minimum 52 byte data and a maximum 15 or 6 bytes of data. Uh, that means the total size of packet can vary between 64 bytes uh, maximum of, and a maximum of 15, 18 bytes. So that's what uh, uh, how a design specification might look like. There might be more details about exactly what is a clock frequency, how wide is your input uh, bus and output bus, etc. What are the actual signal level protocols, etc. But the first step in the verification is to understand the design spec thoroughly. Now, once you understand the design specification, the next step, as we learned initially, is to create a verification plan. So in the verification plan, what we have to capture first is what has to be really verified for this design. So given this design specification, we can think through a lot of scenarios that has to be verified. Now we can take a you can take a few minutes to think through what are all these scenarios that you would verify for this design. Uh, so some of the things that can be that has to be verified are how the packets are switched between two ports or basically routed from an input to an output port. What are the different packet sizes to be verified? Should we verify every single size that is supported or should we randomly test certain sizes? What are some of the boundary cases to be tested? We should verify, especially the minimum packet size, maximum packet size, odd sized packets, etc. How do we, what has, how do we verify the data integrity? What are the patterns that has to be applied to verify the data integrity? Uh, we have to understand what is the CRC algorithm and then make sure the CRC computation is functioning correctly. We also might need to verify the performance of the or design, whether the design can stream packets at the maximum rate from an input output. And the plan should also capture what are some of the negative scenarios to be tested. Say for example, if there are error packets coming in, packet sizes which are like not meeting the specification coming in, how does the design handle? So all of these scenarios has to be thought through and captured in the verification plan, which is the first step. Now, the verification plan we also learned has to capture how things has to be verified in addition to what has to be verified. So we learned about different approaches like simulation, formal assertions. So in this step, we should think about like uh, how good all these features can be verified. Can those be verified using a simulation approach? Are there areas which works well for formal verification? What are the kind of assertions that can be coded which will help you uh, quickly check for design correctness. Uh, so if we kind of follow a simulation based approach, then we also have to figure out how to build a test bench. 
what are the test bench components how do we stimulate the design what are the different test scenarios that we create what are all the stimulus generators that we need we also need to figure out how do we do a check-in should we build a scoreboard or should we depend on a reference model and etc uh, we might also based on the uh, kind of stimulus that we generate we may also need to come up with certain coverage monitors to make sure say all the minimum size packets or maximum size packets are being uh, thoroughly tested based on some of the design internals we might also need to create like coverage monitors for those now once we uh, once we come up with a plan then the next step is to really build that verification environment which helps us to start testing in this case let's pick the same duty example so what we really need to build a verification environment is a packet generator that can create like packet sizes which uh, follow the specification we will also need a driver component that understands the actual signal level interface to the design which can take some of these packets either a directed packet or a random packet and then drive on the design protocol and we will also need some kind of a test which controls like what are the kind of packets that we drive uh, we will also need some monitor components especially or the inputs and outputs which will help us to see like what's going into the design and what's going out of the design and then based on that we can also build a scoreboard or a checker that can get the input from the monitor as well as the output from the monitor and then do a comparison of whether things are behaving as per the design specification now once we build all these components put together all these components then the next step is to actually execute that verification plan that we built so we capture all that scenarios that has to be tested in the verification plan so we have to develop and run all those tests and then the process will find bugs in the design uh, the design the bugs will get fixed in the design and we continue this process of developing and running tests until the bugs slow down and until the design matures uh, that process is also known as regression where we build this test suite and then we continue to regress that test suite uh, at regular intervals in the design phase based on the based on whether you have to do a coverage or not we can should also create like functional coverage and then the last the last step or the question that we ask is like when do we tell that this whole process is done how do we know the verification is done so uh, some of the question that we should ask ourselves is whether all the plan tests or scenarios are executed whether all the tests or the regression suits that we developed are those passing are there any failures and if so why those are failing uh, we should also do a check on how the bugs uh, how the bugs trends are are the bugs uh, coming down and are the bugs are like are these that the bug trend will give you a uh, indication of how stable the design is uh, we should also do a coverage matrix analysis to uh, this will give you an indication of how good your stimulus is whether all the scenarios are being covered so that should be the last step which will give you a confidence on how good you have done the verification so with that uh, this section i will be wrapped up here so I hope uh, you understood some of the verification concepts and through uh, based on this case study, I hope you can also apply some of these concepts to any design that you might need to verify. So in the next section, now we'll start uh, learning more about how to build test managers for simulation based verification. That's when the system verilog language will be more useful. So we'll start learning more about the system verilog language constructs and how the language is, language is used to build some of these test components so thank you thank you for attending this section